All right, welcome back. It's Sully here. We're going to be solving exponential equations. We've done this kind of throughout, but now we're going to do something that we cannot find when the bases are the same. So this reminded me of Mr. Bean when he was a kid. This is actually Mr. Bean. That's his braces. Great job. It said he uses exponential growth model to predict how many people will show up to his party. Sorry, typo. But nobody shows up. Mr. Bean, we love you. We're glad you're here. I'll show up next time, I promise. All right, so let's solve these. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve them graphically. Now, this is part two because we've done this part before. Let's do example one here. So I have to go to y, y equals. And remember, one side of it is going to go into y1. So I'm going to do 5e. e is down here on the natural log. I have to hit second to get to that. And then it's to the 2x. And I'm going to do y2, and that is 50. So I'm going to hit in 50 here. And then let's graph. Let's see where they cross. Remember, it's all about where they cross. Ooh, I don't see where they cross. So now I have to change my window. So let's think. This is a y value of 50. So I probably need to see my y values. My min, negative 10. Ah, my y max right here needs to change. I'm going to come down and change that. Maybe I'll change it to 60. And then I'll graph again and see what happens. Great. Now I can see this is where they cross. That's going to be my solution. I need to calculate, so I have to do second trace. That allows me to calculate the intersection, number five. Again, you've done this before. I know that. First curve, yep, that's my first curve. Second curve is 50, yep. Do I want to guess? No. There we go. We have in our intersection right now. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this. All right. So we now have our answer. And our answer, let's round it to the nearest thousandth. I like um, using the more decimal places I can, the better on these. So I'm going to say x is 1.151. I forgot a 1 there. All right, so 1.151. Very good. All right, I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try to do the next one all by yourself. All right, let's take a look at this one. I have my equations in. When I go to graph in a standard window, I see they're, they're getting close, but I can't see what they are. So now there's times when you have to, I go to the table, second table. I want to look to see where I can see where they're crossing. So these are real tiny numbers, one and a hundred. This goes up pretty quickly here. So from four to 16, so this, this is above, and then all of a sudden this is below. That means they have to cross somewhere in here, right? So I need my y value to be 100. That's, that's my thing. So I'm going to go to my y value, max 100. Let's see what happens. Graph looks like I can probably see where they cross there, right? It's going to be tight. So let's do it. Second calc. I want to find my intersection. Press enter. That's my first curve. That's my second curve. Do I want to guess? No. Boom. There it is. Now, remember. If it says uh, cannot do or no solution or there's a calculator mistake, that's not the calculator's mistake, okay? That's your mistake. And what that is is they don't actually cross on the screen that you're showing. So you actually have to go back and redo that. So let's do this one. This one is going to be 0 0.861 equals x. Okay, so that's how we do these graphically. But graphically is not always the best way. Sometimes it is the best way. But if we don't have that tool, we can also solve equations algebraically. So what's the inverse of an exponential function? We talked about this at the beginning of the unit. The inverse of exponentials are logarithms. All right, that's what we've been doing all unit. Okay? So what we're going to do is, remember the rule. If I had x plus 2 equals 7, the inverse operation of adding 2 is subtracting 2, and I have to do it to both sides, and then I get x is 5. So the inverse operation of an exponent is I need to take a logarithm. So I'm going to put this down here. Log of 6x, I have to take both sides, log of 200. Now, let's remember one of our log properties. This is one of the definition-based properties. And it stated this. 
if I take a log base b of b, my answer is going to simplify to simply the exponent. So if I take log 6 of 6, now these match. I have to take log 6 of 200 of this side. See, all I'm doing is I'm taking log base 6 of 6x and log base 6 of 200. So what's left here? My log rule tells me that this simplifies, and I just have x equals log base 6 of 200. Now, that's the exact answer, all right? If we wanted a rounded answer, we could go to our math menu, go up to log base, press enter. Whoops, let's get out of there. Math, log base. I want log base 6 of 200. So we get 2.957. I like three decimals for these. X equals 2.957. There we have it. All right. Let's try another one. Let's try this one. So I have 4 times something, right? 4 times e to the fifth. These are multiplying. So I can divide both sides by 4. So now I have e to the x plus 5 equals 100. Now, I want to take a log that cancels this. So I need to take log base e of e. That'll cancel it. But log base e is a special one. What is log base e? It's the natural log. That's right. So the log e of x plus 5 equals log, natural log of 100. So the natural log of e to the x plus 5 equals the natural log of 100. These cancel out and I have x plus 5 equals log 100. And I can subtract 5. So I have x equals the natural log of 100 minus 5. That is the exact answer. If we want a rounded answer, let's put it in the calculator. Natural logs right here, the natural log of 100, make sure it's in parentheses, minus 5, hit enter, and we get negative 3, or negative 0 0.395, 395. And I use these wavy lines because it's not exact, it's a good way to say it's approximately. All right, so I looked at this. I picked up Mr. Bean. Sometimes we just looked funny when we were kids, but some people choose a different path. This is Mr. Bruss, and this is a recent picture. He chose this because he was felt inspired by the show Vikings to have a Viking haircut. Don't know what's going on down there in Siganella, Mr. Bruss, but congratulations. That is a new low. Way to go. All right, so I want you to pause this one and try this one on your own first. All right, take a risk. Try it. See what happens. So let's take a look. I'm going to divide by 5. I get 161. So that's 3 to the 2x minus 3. I need to take the log base 3 of 3. That way it goes away. And I have 2x minus 3 equals log base 3 of 161. I add 3 to both sides. Then I divide by 2. When, so my exact answer here would be log base 3 of 161 plus 3 over 2. When you find the approximate of 3.813, I would do very simply. Use my log base, find this, add 3 to it, and then divide that number by 2. I would not put this in my calculator all at the same time because a lot of you are doing that wrong. You need to group the top, okay? All right, here we go. So we're going to try a new one. We're going to need to use some other properties to solve this one. Um, so I have 16e to the 2x equals 4e to the 5x. So the first thing I see is I have the 16 and 4. This is 16 times and 4. I'm going to divide. It doesn't really matter which way you go, but I know most of you don't like fractions, so I like to divide the smaller number. So now this is going to be 4e to the 2x equals e to the 5x. All right, so if I took the natural log of e, that would cancel it out. That means I have to take the natural log of this whole side, 
four, uh, four times, excuse me, e to the 2x. Got ahead of myself. So the natural log of e to the 5x is just going to be 5x because these are going to cancel each other out. They're inverses. Now, my product rule of logarithm said that I can take the natural log of each of these separately and add the results. So let's do that. And why is that beneficial? Well, the natural log of 4 is just a number. But the natural log of e to the 2x, oh, look at this. These cancel, and now I have 2x equals 5x. Subtract 2x from both sides, and we get the natural log of 4 equals 3x. Divide by 3. And our exact answer would be the natural log of 4 over 3. That would be our exact most precise answer, all right? If I wanted an estimate, I could totally get an estimate. I would do the natural log of 4, then divide that by 3, and I would get x is approximately 0 0.462. Okay? So you'll notice we had to use that multiplication property of logarithms to set it into two different things here. So I want you to try the next one. Uh, do your best. Here's Mr. Kelly, one of his awkward stages as well. His rock and roll uh, his, uh, stage there. Um, yeah, you ask him. He used to tour the world all over. Good guy. So, pause the video and you try this one all on your own. So, I started by dividing both sides by 3. I've got 3 times 4 to the 2y equals y to the y minus 2, or 4 to the y minus 2. I knew that I could get rid of this 4 by taking base 4, so I took log base 4 at both sides. I used the product property of logarithms to split these into two things that I'm adding, both base 4. Over here, this canceled right here, and it gave me y minus 2. Now this cancels, and I have 2y. I want to get my y's together, so I subtracted 2y. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. I added over 2, and then last but not least, I divided by negative 1. So I had negative log 4 to the third uh, of 3 minus 2, or approximately negative 2.792. Okay? All right, let's take a look at modeling with exponents. Ooh, here's where the real fun begins. So Mr. Kelly was given $500 for his high school graduation in 1995. He puts in a bank that promises investment will grow by 12% each year. How many years will he need to invest if he waits five? He wants to have five thousand dollars in his account. So let's see. We have continuous compounding interest. We have compounding interest that is compounding by a certain amount of time, other than a year, and we have an increase or decrease per one unit of time. So this is like per year. So this one looks to be what it is. So my new amount of money is equal to my initial times my rate to the x. So my new amount of money is 5,000, and I want it to equal how much I put in, 500, times my rate. It goes up 12%, so that's 112%, right, which is 1.12 to the x. So we solve that. I'm going to divide both sides by 500, and we get 10 equals 1.12 to the x. To cancel that, I need to do the log, right? So I'm going to do the log to the base of 1.12 of 10, and I'm going to do the log of 1.12 of 1.12 to the x. This is going to cancel for us, so we now have x equals this. Now, in a real-world situation, does the exact answer make a lot of sense? So are we going to go around talking about, well, the log of 1.12 of 10 will tell me how much money he has after 10 years, blah, 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 blah. We don't know. So that's, that's no good. We need to put that in our calculator, and you should get x is approximately 10.32 years. There you have it. Okay? So I want you to try this one. Set it up at least and see what you can do. All right, how much quicker would it be? So I know this is a continuous one. 
So my A is 5,000. That's how much I want to end up with. My principal, what I put in was 500. We knew that from the last problem. The rate is 12%. That's 0.112. So there's a difference between 1.112 and 0.112. The rate is 12% or 0.12. All right. I only add the 1 to it if I'm doing a unit of time. Okay. If I'm using either of these other formulas, I'm not going to add a 1 to that value. And then I don't know my time. So I plugged it in. So I'm going to divide by 500 on both sides. So we know that's going to be 10 equals e to the 0.12t. I need to take the natural log of both sides because the natural log cancels the e. So now I have the natural log of 10 equals 0.12t divided by 0.12. And, of course, it'll be available in the natural log of 10 over, well, that doesn't make any sense. Let's put that into a real, a real number. So that's going to be about 19.19 years. But the question is, how much quicker would it be? So the other problem, it said it took 20.32 years. This is 19.19 years. So if we subtract those two, it is about over 1.13 years faster. All right. Now, a lot of you are thinking, well, big deal, you know, a year, just a year of my life. A year is a long time, guys. All right. A year is a long time. All right. I want you to pause the video, do these, give it a legitimate try, and we will see how you did. So on this first one, I did a couple things. I subtracted 90 and got 15. I did my power to a power, which is multiply. So that's 2x, not x squared. It's 2x. Then I need the log base 10, so that's just the common log. So log of 10 of 2x equals log of 15. That gave me 2x equals log of 15, divide by 2. Here's my exact answer, log of 15 over 2. My approximate answer is 0 0.588. Over here, I use per unit of time. We're doing per month, right? So my initial value is 13% of my head's covered. My final answer, I want 100% covered. And I know that my rate is going to be doubling, doubling every three months. So 100 equals 13 times 2 to the x over 3, because this isn't going to double until this says 3 over 3, right? So I need this to say 3 over 3, so I put that in there. Okay, now here we go. So I divide by 13. Now, you could have gotten a decimal right here. The sooner you take decimals the more off your answer is going to be at the end. So I would leave that as 100 over 13. I knew I had to take the log base 2 of both sides because I had a base 2 here. So I did log base 2 of 100 over 13, and that gave me x over 3. The opposite of divide by 3 is multiply. I multiplied this number by 3, and I got 8.8 .8 months. There you have it. I hope you understand that. Good luck on all the equations that you'll be doing this, this time. Uh, remember, it's important to ask for help when you need it, okay? Until next time, be the change that you want to see in the world. Peace!